Good evening and welcome to Old St. Mary's as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices and let's stand and take a moment to greet each other. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1192 in your hymnal, and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like on the OSM Parish app, or click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Our gathering song is number 924. As we gather at your table, number 924. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us Christ your great compassion to forgive as you forgave. May we still behold your image in the world you die to save. Gracious Spirit, help us summon other guests to share that feast. We're triumphant, love will welcome those who had been last and least. There no more will envy blind us, nor will pride our peace destroy. As we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, tonight we gather for our feast the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, or what some would know as Corpus Christi. And the readings, the homily, the prayers, lead us to reflect on what that means, and most importantly, what we are called to do. And so as we, as we enter into this mystery, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and turn to God for mercy. Lord Jesus, you become our food for the journey. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the wine of compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us and satisfy our thirst so that in turn we may feed others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, 
O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day, He erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it out loud to the people who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ the Lord. El caliz que bendecimos es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. 
Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ the Lord. El caliz que bendecimos es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. How can I repay the Lord the goodness God has shown to me? The cup of blessing I raise, I call upon God's name. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ the Lord. El caliz que bendecimos es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. Al Señor que penosa es la muerte de sus fieles. Soy tu sirviente, tu hijo, rompiste mis cadenas. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ the Lord, el Cali. Que bendecimos es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. Thanks and praise I will offer God and call upon your name, Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. In the presence of God's people, our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ the Lord. El caliz que bendecimos es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ who through eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. Cleanse our consciousness from deep works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room? Where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen. I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. As you listen to the readings tonight, one of the things that is playing out that maybe is not quite so obvious, but it's there is that there is a ritual, there is a pattern for how all these celebrations take place. Passover has its own set of rules, the sacrifice of bulls has its own set of rules, the coming together as community has its own set of rules. So I was thinking about that in reflection to this being the feast of the body and blood of Christ. It's real easy to take this feast and say it's about something. It's about a thing. It's about bread and wine being changed into the body and blood of Christ. But that's not really the core of it. It's got to go one step further. It's got to take that step to say it's about us becoming the body and blood of Christ. So what I've been uh, explaining at the other Masses, and it started last night at our 5 o'clock, we had a baptism of a young man. And so the baptism here takes place during Sunday Mass. When I was uh, beginning out as a priest, uh, the parish I was at, St. Paul's in Los Angeles, we had some Masses with baptism at them, but we also had at least once a month, we had baptism separate from Mass. And in both cases, there's an understanding this is about community. Now, it wasn't always true that the church did 
baptisms at Mass. And in fact, if we go back in time, and, and it's not a far history, but if we go back to the 1980s, the 1980s was the beginning of what some of you know of as the RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. It is the way people come into the church. And the biggest part of the RCIA is those who are baptized, confirmed, and receive Eucharist. And it's usually once a year, it's at the Easter Vigil, it's a very big deal. How we get to that, how we get to the RCIA, is you have to realize that for many years of church history, we didn't have a process like that. We didn't have a journey. We, what we had was convert instruction. And have you ever heard of convert instruction? And what convert instruction was, was all over the place. Depending on who you did it with, it could be more extended, it could be very uh, detailed, or it could be you meeting one-on-one -on -one with someone who took you through it, and maybe after three weeks you were ready. We don't quite do it that way anymore. But way, way back, so going back 20 years before the 80s, in the 1960s, when Vatican II met together, one of the directives was, doesn't the church have something better than convert instruction for people to understand their faith and participate in it? And as it turns out, we did. We do. It goes back to the first centuries of the church when people who were seeking to come into the church came in through baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. And the preparation that they had to go through to do that, because remember, this was a time when the church was persecuted and was partially underground. And what you had to do was really take on a mentorship, someone to lead you and guide you, someone to watch you, someone to, how does this have to do with your everyday life? And it was intended to be gradual and intended to change the heart of those who were seeking to be Christian, because we wanted to be sure because you never knew who might turn you into the Roman authorities or that. So, beginning in the 1960s and until the 1980s, the church worked at bringing that back into contemporary culture and saying, if someone wants to be Christian, they need to follow a pathway where it changes their lives, where it makes a difference, whether, where they can see that God is reaching them and reaching out to them. And so in the 1980s, RCIA came out full on, um, Baptism, Confirmation, Eucharist. It's an extended period where someone comes in. And we know that. But what we don't always notice is that that change, making adult initiation the norm in the church, shifted us from the norm where baptism was reserved to kids. So in the 1980s, the norm for baptism became adults, not children. And so you also saw in the 80s a shift in how we did baptism of children. And in fact, if you go to a church, and as I said earlier, some churches do baptism separate from Sunday Mass, but the intention for connecting it with Sunday Mass is there's something in the celebration that is meant to lead us to full initiation, which is to come to the table of the Eucharist. So when I started doing baptisms as a new priest, I did what I saw other priests doing. You know, and, and they would have the families come in, you'd come to the font, and you did everything around the font. Now here's a strange thought. Um, about six months in, I was actually reading the rite, the book that tells us how to celebrate baptism, and guess what? It looks more like our CIA because the, the right for infant baptism mirrors what's going on in the adult right in that if you do it full on, and I like doing things full on, some of you know that it takes me a while to do things sometimes because I'm trying to look at all the important parts that are there. And so what's in the infant right is the priest goes to the door of the church to welcome the family and the child. And there he greets them and then finds out the name of, of who the child is and what they want. You know, they want to be baptized. And then says, 
I claim you for Christ, come on in. And we bring them in, and then the infant baptism is supposed to move up to where the readings are done or where the scripture is kept. And that's where they do the reading of God's word. And after that, there's some prayers, there's some reflection on that. There's particular prayers for the kids, and there's also uh, the invocation of the saints to pray for them. And there's an anointing that takes place with the oil of catechumens, because catechumens, it's usually a, an anointing right here at the top of the chest uh, saying you're getting ready for baptism. <clears throat> so after doing that prayer and having heard the word of God, the community then takes another little procession and they go to the place of baptism. And the child is baptized with water. They are uh, anointed with oil. They are clothed with a white garment. They are given a lit candle. Their ears and their mouths are blessed. The oil is significant. In the adult rite, when we do a, when we do a baptism of an, an adult, not only do they get the oil, but the oil has a special connection because it's called confirmation. It's not just a little oil. It's a bunch of oil to say, you are being confirmed. When we do an infant baptism, it's a hearkening that confirmation is going to come. Now, up until 1910, I wasn't around back then, but uh, up until 1910, when the church brought people in, they always did baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist in that order. And the time for First Communion, or Eucharist, was later, more like fifth grade age. It was Pius X who said, could we move this up a bit? And he moved, uh, infant, or moved First Communion up to like the age of seven. But confirmation came after. But up until that, it, that was always the order in the church, was baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist saying, you enter, you're strengthened, and now you come to the table and you keep coming back to the table. That was where it was at. Check out uh, Song of Bernadette if you want to see an example of that. It's a good, good show. When we are doing infant baptisms after the child has been fully baptized, there's one more piece. There's one more procession that takes place. The whole community moves from the font and gathers around the altar. And along the way, the priest says to them, understand that once you are baptized, you are pursuing this journey of faith. You are coming to confirmation where you'll be strengthened. You'll be coming to the table of the Lord where you will be in full communion with everyone. And so everyone gathers around the table after that reminder and prays together the Our Father. And it's only after that that we are blessed and sent out. So that's what happens in infant baptism. And the connection for us with that is that as we celebrate Corpus Christi Sunday, that sense of journey and mission, that sense of the ritual that draws us together, is meant to articulate the different parts of our lives. We ritualize it in the context of church so that we can see that Christ is at work here. And if he's at work here, then you get to take it and put it into the other parts of your lives. Where is Christ at work in my place of employment? Where is Christ at work in my schooling? Where is Christ at work with my families and friends and teams and all of that? So what we celebrate here, what, what, what you heard in the scriptures, what you will hear in the rest of the prayers throughout the Mass, yes, bread and wine are transformed into the body and blood of Christ. And yes, they are given to be eaten. They are, be given, they are being given to share. And they transform us. It isn't just bread and wine changed. It's our lives changed. Because by accepting the body and blood of Christ, we are ready to pursue the rest of our journey to bring his love and his understanding to our world. Is that something you want to do? I got some shaking of heads. That's good. So may God continue to bless us all in our understanding of how much his life is part of ours and let us follow where it leads.
And let's now profess that faith we share tonight using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are the body of Christ, broken and poured out, grasped by Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, raised up to life with God. We make the sacrifice of a lonely individuality in order to be a community of unique individuals who now make common prayer. For all who profess faith in Jesus Christ, to be led by him and brought to unity with others in him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world and its peoples, for peace in place of war, dialogue in place of terror, for a common understanding of each person's dignity and ability to see all men and women as brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local church, all its leaders, ordained and lay, for the polis, for the parish, and all called to leadership, that we may live up to our priestly responsibilities as members of the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all initiated in the church this past year, especially those who have come to full communion, and all of our first communicants, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those with special needs, those in need of healing, employment, food, and shelter, those in need of a friend or other special help, and all the needs we hold in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners who travel and are away, for all who are visiting with us, joining with us while on vacation, and those seeking to join us in our mission as a parish, and those beginning new missions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our loved ones who have died, including Dennis Molitor, and all who mourn their peace Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, ever faithful and true, you claim us as your own people and your own flesh and blood. Accept these prayers and all our prayers we offer through our brother, Christ the Lord. Amen. Thank you for gathering with us once again tonight and those who join us online. Uh, tonight we will have two collections. The first collection is for the needs and the maintenance of Old St. Mary's Church itself. The second time the baskets are passed is for our Sharing Parish collection, where we help the people in need at St. James Parish. You're welcome to put uh, money in the envelope. Uh, there is a blue envelope in the pews for that second collection. You can also do the collection online at our Give button on the parish website or mail-in contributions. Thank you for your generosity and your help. the 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, grant your church the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings that we here present, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by his sacred mystery, you made them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of heaven cry out and without end we acclaim. Oh, 
holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your death, death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and our patron, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. 
Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Confident in the words that Jesus gave us, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. That peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Please join us in singing number 1025, Take and Eat, number 1025.
and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the word that spoke and light was made. I am the seed that I to be reborn. I am the bread that comes from heaven above. I am the vine that fills your cup with joy. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink. Take and drink, this is my blood given up for you. I am the way that leads the exile on. I am the truth that sets the captive free. I am the life that raises up the dead. I am your peace, true peace, my gift to you. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the Lamb that takes away your sin. I am the gate that guards you night and day. You are my flock, you know the shepherd's voice. You are my own, your ransom is my blood. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you. I am the cornerstone that God has laid, a chosen stone and precious in his eyes. You are God's dwelling place on me, you rest, like living stones, a temple for God's praise. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up for you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood given up for you.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. We thank you for joining us in prayer and worship today, both here in person and in person from home. Let's continue to pray and think about each other and help each other out. Uh, please take home a copy of the bulletin or check out the parish media. There's lots of important information in there. Among those things is a note of thank you from Father PJ for his 50th anniversary a few weeks ago. Also a note about his upcoming changes and where he's headed, so that will be uh, helpful to everyone. Um, do we have any newcomers or first-time visitors with us for the first time? We'll invite you to stand up just so we can recognize you. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great to have you with us. And feel free to come back anytime. How many are with the Clinical Oncology Convention? Okay. So a good bunch of there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, how many of our eighth grade graduates are with us tonight, too, that we can congratulate them? There we go. Yeah. We also have with us tonight some of our first communicants who did their first communion over the course of this past Past year. I'm going to invite them to come forward. We have some special gifts for them tonight. One of our parishioners uh, donated them, so uh, we have a rosary and a coloring book for each of them. So come on forward. Come down. Congratulations. 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 Did I get everyone? We even had some of the adults come forward at the 11 to receive them. For them. So congratulations to them once again on this Corpus Christi. Thank you all. And then it's that time of year when we start thinking about the fall already and faith formation and encourage you to sign up for the classes in the fall but also we need some catechists and teachers and and James is going to tell us a bit about that good evening everyone for visitors or first timers um, I'm uh, oblate James Holsauer Chukas I am I serve as a director of lifelong faith formation and with me is some members of our formation team raise your hand if you're here from the formation team we got Janet Lauren Sarah over here. And what we're doing this weekend is recruiting for catechists. Catechist is kind of a large word. It's an official ministry in the church, thanks to Pope Francis, for anyone that teaches about the faith. So what we're looking for are people who are interested in perhaps helping us with baptism prep, our Sunday faith formation program, youth ministry, young adults, um, pretty much all ages. So um, after Mass, any of us will be happy to answer any questions you may have. You don't need any kind of advanced degree or theology background necessarily, just a passion for the faith, a passion for community, um, and a desire for creating safe environments. So we'll be happy to talk to you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, James. And the Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Fellow members of the body of Christ, go in peace to love and serve one another. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth, singing number 738. Hallelujah, we sing your praises, number 738. We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Alleluia, we sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. 
Alleluia, Pelo Tsarona, Tita Vile Keofela. Alleluia, Pelo Tsarona, Tita Vile Keofela. Christ the Lord, you are said, I am wine, I am bread. I am wine, I am bread. Give to all who thirst and hunger. Christ the Lord, who are said, I am wine, I am bread. I am wine, I am bread. Give to all who thirst and hunger. Hallelujah, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Alleluia, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Alleluia, Pelo Tsarona, Vita Pile Kaofela. Alleluia, Pelo Tsarona, Vita Pile Kaofela.
Thank <laughs> you. 